Hello everybody, thank you for coming to another story time this week. This week, the theme of our story is about a certain type of insect. This insect is pretty unique in that it migrates a very long distance. And I'm very excited about this insect because I've been raising this insect and it's been a really exciting week raising this insect. Any guesses? If you guessed monarch butterfly, then you are correct. I, a few weeks ago, went out and found lots of different monarch caterpillars in all different sizes. And I now have three adult butterflies, one chrysalis that is going to turn into a butterfly today. It's so ready. It might even happen during story time, so maybe you can get to see it. And then another, let's see. Hmm. seven caterpillars that are still in their chrysalis that will come out later this week. So you might be wondering, why is she raising caterpillars? For a couple reasons. One, there's lots of different diseases and pests that can affect monarch butterflies, um, especially in the chrysalis stage or in the caterpillar stage. So if you can collect young caterpillars or eggs and raise them until they're adults, that can sometimes help with monarch survival. Two, make sure you know what you're doing though and I'll put some resources down below if you are interested in doing that. Two, I have a bunch of monarch and milkweed programs coming up, so we're gonna be using these butterflies in the programs before I release them. And three, this is part of a citizen science effort, so before I release any of these monarchs, I have these little monarch tags, and I'm gonna put one of these stickers right on the wing of the monarch and you can see there's, maybe you can't see, they're so tiny. They gotta be tiny, they go on a butterfly wing, right? There's a number with each tag on here, and that way when these monarchs migrate all the way down to Mexico, if somebody finds them along the way, or finds them in Mexico, or finds them when they're on their way back from Mexico, they can submit this number online, and they'll know that that was a monarch that I raised here and released in Wisconsin. And we'll get a bunch of different information. Like, we'll know how far that monarch went. We'll know more about the timing of that monarch's migration. Maybe when it went down. Maybe when it's coming back. So there's a lot of different information that can be gained from that. Okay. So... I'll put on my stickers, I'll record all that data on my sheet, and then I'll submit this to an organization called Monarch Watch that records all these different tags from monarchs across the country. Anybody can do this. Um, you do have to pay for the tags. So you can go on their website and order these tags, and you can catch monarchs, adult monarchs, out in the wild and tag them, and then re-release them. Um, while they're migrating, so in August, September, maybe even into October. Or you can do what I did and get eggs or caterpillars, or you could maybe even find a chrysalis um, and raise them to adults and tag them before releasing them. So our story today is going to be all about monarchs, so I won't tell you anymore. Um, and then at the end of our story, I'll show you the monarchs that I have here. The one that's in its chrysalis is really about to turn into a butterfly so hopefully that happens while we're reading and then you can see it at the end again um, after it is a butterfly. All right it's time for our story. It's called Monarchs and Milkweed by Helen Frost and Leonid Gore. In a patch of dirt behind an old red barn, milkweed stretches into warm spring air. Its roots reach deep and wide. Its stem points to the sky. It's our milkweed plant. Monarch spreads her wings and rides the wind, past white and yellow daisies, across a creek, heading north. Okay, so if our monarchs are headed north, what season would it be? Must be spring. They're coming back from migration. Milkweed's new leaves push out. Then purple flowers, soft and round and fragrant. Hmm, what does it mean to be fragrant? It means 
smelly. The flowers smell hopefully good, right? Monarch finds a dandelion, drinks its nectar, and flies on. She stops again, rests, and drinks, and flies again. Milkweed stretches taller. Two by two, its leaves spread wide, sheltering long-legged spiders, black and orange beetles. Monarch lights on milkweed, drums her feet on milkweed's flower, and tastes home. So milkweed plants can be home for lots of other insects besides monarchs, and our adult monarchs know that they're on the right plant to lay their eggs by tasting the flower with their feet. So imagine having your taste buds in your feet. Our butterfly is definitely hatching right now. I can't wait to show it to you. It's very distracting. Milkweed's flowers fall away. Green pods push out. Inside these bumpy fists, new seeds are forming. So right now, it's about it's mid-September when I'm reading this, and all of our milkweed plants have these pods on them with those seeds of the next milkweed plants. Monarch finds a mate and stays with him all afternoon, all night into the morning. Eggs on her body grow heavy. She searches for... What's she going to lay her eggs on? Milkweed! A breeze bends milkweed side to side. Monarch chooses its best leaf, swaying in the breeze with milkweed. She curls her body underneath the leaf and glues one pale yellow egg to its soft underside. She flies from milkweed plant to milkweed plant, stopping on each to lay one shiny egg. Inside Monarch's egg, a caterpillar forms, and four days later, pushes out, shorter than an eyelash. Wow, that's very short. Almost invisible against the leaf's pale green. It eats the shell that held it, then moves across the leaf. It eats the leaf. It grows. And when it grows too big to fit inside its skin, it crawls right out. New skin already formed beneath the old. Yellow, black, and white. The monarch caterpillar feeds on milkweed's bitter leaves and grows. <clears throat> Four times the caterpillar sheds its skin, and then one evening in late summer, it weaves a sturdy path under a milkweed leaf, hangs upside down, and shapes its body like a J. Its feelers droop, and one last time it sheds its skin. It twists and turns and pulls its body up, transforming into a chrysalis. It hangs beneath the leaf, a shining jewel, jade green and speckled with gold. Twelve days, the monarch chrysalis shines in noontime shadows. Twelve nights, it waits under the moon and stars. It grows darker, gray, then black and orange as new monarch wings shine through. That's how I knew mine was about to turn into a butterfly. It got very dark, and then the top of it starts to swell a little bit. And now my butterfly's out. Early one morning, the chrysalis splits open. A new monarch steps out. Moist wings pressed against her body. She clings to her clear case of the chrysalis as warm air dries her wings. She opens her wings, closes them, opens them wide. A light breeze lifts her, and she flies. Milkweed's leaves, now full of holes, turn yellow, then brown. Their edges curl, and they begin to fall. Monarch flies from purple zinnia to black-eyed Susan, drinking nectar, getting ready. As the days turn cool, she turns south towards warmer air to begin her longest journey. Where's she going? Mexico! Milkweed's pods are full. Its seeds are almost ready. In September's sun, 
the pod's strong walls turn dry and brown. Monarch flies and rides the wind, stopping only long enough to drink sweet nectar from a field of purple asters. She follows the last of the flowers of summer, and she flies on and on, almost 2,000 miles, all the way to Mexico. Milkweed's pods split open. Brown seeds lay close together on a soft white bed. October wind catches a silky tendril, opens it, and lifts a seed into the air. Carrying it out and away, across a river, to an old white house. A kitten reaches up a paw and bats at the white fluff until it disappears. How many of you have ever played with the cottony seeds of a milkweed plant? Rain comes. Snow comes. Rain comes again. Sun warms the earth. Earth warms the seed, and under the dirt, it opens. Roots reach down. A tip of green presses out and up toward the warmth and light. Milkweed's first spring leaf unfurls. New milkweed plant. Far to the south in Mexico, Monarch rides the wind toward it. So as soon as we start getting milkweed plants again in the springtime, our monarchs start migrating back up here from Mexico. There's a note from the author in the back that I'll read. It says, each fall, monarch butterflies migrate from eastern North America to Mexico. Monarchs west of the Rocky Mountains migrate to California. Millions of monarchs gather in Mexico's Oyamel fir forests and stay there for the winter. In the spring, monarchs begin the journey back north. On their northern migration, Monarchs mate and lay eggs. Those eggs become caterpillars, then chrysalises. New butterflies emerge and continue the journey. This happens two, three, or four times during the northern migration. The butterflies that complete the return journey are offspring of those that left in the fall. The story in this book begins with the final generation on one northern journey and ends with the monarch in the next generation as that monarch is leaving Mexico to begin the journey north the following spring. And what about the milkweed? Each species of butterfly has a host plant, one kind of plant on which the butterfly lays its eggs. When the caterpillars hatch, this is the best kind of plant for them to eat. Milkweed is the host plant for monarch butterflies. Monarchs can taste with their front feet, and they land on milkweed. They recognize it as the right place to lay their eggs. Many kinds of milkweed grow in fields along the monarch's journey. When it is time for a monarch to lay her eggs, she looks for milkweed plants. Each monarch lays hundreds of eggs, usually one on each milkweed plant. That way, when the egg hatch, when the eggs hatch, each caterpillar has enough food. The milkweed leaves have a bitter taste, and monarch caterpillars and butterflies also have that taste. So birds don't like to eat them. Scientists are trying to learn more about how monarch butterflies find their way to and from the places where they spend the winter. They aren't sure why one butterfly can fly all the way south, but it takes several generations to return north. Although we have learned a lot about monarch and milkweed, many mysteries remain for future scientists to explore. So if you really love monarch butterflies, you could be one of those scientists to solve one of the remaining mysteries. <clears throat> Alright, let's see the butterfly that came out during story time. just came out of the chrysalis. You can see there's another empty chrysalis in the background there, another one up there, another one um, up here in the corner. And you can see there's still quite a few in there that have not come out yet. One, two, three, four, five, six in this cage. I have a couple different places with them. And let's go quick. I put our other cage out in the sun with the three that came out of their chrysalis yesterday. Um, oh, there they are. You can see their wings are now dry. They're developing their flight muscles. They're ready to be released, actually, and they'll be released at programs this week. They have some flowers 
in there to feed on fruit slices and sugar water on top. Um, let's see if we can get their, open their wings. There's two females and one male in here. So yeah, these are, oh, our butterflies. Can't wait to release them. So that's our story time for this week. I'll put some resources down below if you want to learn more about monarch butterflies or if you want to know how you can help. The best possible way that you can help monarch butterflies is to plant habitat for them. So that means planting milkweed. You might have heard this summer they were recently listed as an endangered species because they've lost so much of their habitat and their populations are declining. So the best, best, best way you can help a monarch is to provide a place for it to live. Um, so there'll be information in our monarch resource this week if you want to know more about how you could do that. You could also become involved in citizen science so you can observe monarchs in the wild. Um, even if you're not comfortable catching them, you can just look with your eyes and those observations are really important for scientists or if you wanted to try catching and tagging and releasing monarchs if you have the help of an adult you could do that too so more information down below and we'll see you in two more weeks for another story time bye, -bye.